Hey, what's up, everybody? Check this out. Whee! And it disappears. And it disappears. <laughs> so that is the new Quake mode. It is in Windows Terminal. Let's go and take a look on how you can install that on your system. So the very first thing that I did was I went to the store. So let's go head over to the Microsoft store. And once you get to the store, do a search here and then just do a quick search for terminal. You're going to want the Windows terminal preview. You can go to the preview here and then you just want to download this and then launch it. I have already downloaded it and I have already launched it. And so here we go. This is the terminal and you can check which version that you're using by going down here to about, as you can see, it's 1.9.1445.0. So I'm going to hit OK right there. So how do you enable it? Well, the way that I enabled it was that I went to click on this drop down here and then I went into settings. Um, what I did was I clicked on the open JSON file. And once I did that, it's opened an instance here in Visual Studio Code that we could play with. So the line that I added in after playing around with it for just a little bit was I added in this line right here, which I'll put in the comments below. So it's a command and it has an action here of global summon. I'm giving it a name of Quake. Drop down duration is how many durations it'll take to drop down. So as you can see right here, 200, I guess, milliseconds there. Uh, toggle visibility true, um, monitor any desktop to current. Now all of these options are really cool, really exciting. And you can actually head over to a docs page here. And here is where you start to see that is global summon. So it says in here that when pressed, this action will summon the terminal window, which window is summoned, where the window is summoned to, and how the window behaves when summoning it is controlled by the properties on this action. So we can see inside of this, as I scroll down a bit here, it says default binding and we got keys, command, and then what the action is. You can send this to a different type of desktop. So instead of it going here to like my primary monitor, uh, especially right here in this monitor section, it could go to one of my other monitors that I have listed. Uh, the name, as I stated here, is definitely optional for the drop down duration. This is the millisecond. So, hey, I was actually correct there. So 200 is a reasonable value. And then for toggle visibility, defaults to true. When true, pressing the assigned keys for this action will dismiss the window when the window is currently the foreground window. When false, pressing the assigned keys will only ever bring the window to the foreground. Okay, and so here's a couple of the different ways that these monitor desktops and names will behave and a little bit more information and then down here if you want to play around and i've already copied this kind of into my file here uh, but if you want to play around with these different formats then you absolutely can and then here is the code and i made i think a few little modifications to it on how to actually summon this little drop down right here now, one thing you may be saying is you may be saying, okay, well, that's great and all. Um, what if I want to default this to something outside of the PowerShell? Uh, just head over to your same settings.json that we've been working with up here at the top. You will see this default profile right now. It is actually attached to the GUID which is Windows PowerShell, and I want to start using Ubuntu's. So I'm gonna take out that GUID right here. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna come back up here, and we're gonna just simply paste that in. And I'm gonna save the file. Okay, and there we go. We are back to using Ubuntu. And there we go. We just ran our first LSB underscore release dash A there. 
Um, so yeah, if it doesn't work, just make sure you close out of the terminal and you bring it back up. Another quick question here is if I take the existing terminal that I had and I close out of that, if I do that same keyboard combo there, I still get the last command that I issued and it's still active up there at the very top. So you don't have to keep Windows Terminal completely open in order to take advantage of the feature. One other quick thing to note before I leave you here is, is that the key bind, the default key binding for the Quake command is obviously, obviously the Windows and the Quote command. Now one thing to keep in mind is, is that if you've already got another application, maybe such as like Power Toys or whatever that's already bound to that, you will need to unbind that keyboard combo in order to use this. Uh, so there you go. Quake mode is now in the Windows terminal on Windows 10. And you can enjoy a command prompt from absolutely anywhere. That's it for now. Take care. Bye-bye.